Second Timothy chapter 3 verse number 15. Second Timothy 3 verse 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Next verse. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Next verse. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now that's spiritual growth. All right, so by introducing the subject of salvation in verse 15, which is where we have the word soteria. You've known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make the wise unto soteria. Now don't forget that soteria has a verb called sozo. Sozo. And we looked at it from the healing perspective. All right, from the perspective of, 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 of restoration. Restoration perspective also. And then we said there must be a sota. Somebody who does that. That's why he says through faith and the sota is Christ Jesus. So it was on that tangent we left out yesterday. To see sin actually as a condition. Both in motive and also in action. Which we will explore for that tonight. Don't forget we said you cannot mention sin without an action. You cannot say hamatia without an, you know, without an montano. Montano. There must be an action to sin. So the question we're going to answer today into the next few days will be, is there a common sin in humanity or what people usually say original sin? Is there a common sin in humanity? That's the question we're going to explore the next few days. Oftentimes it's called the original sin and we have seen it, but I want us to be more direct, intentional, and detailed as we explore into this into this aspect of our teaching is there a common sin i remember as a child my parents will always say we're all sinners and then to make matters worse for me i attended a church where the constant message was seen every sunday they would hit you target you flog you and bring you out to the altar I answered altar call until I don't know which of them actually got me born again. Because I was on the altar constantly because every Sunday, the teaching was that we're all sinners, we're all doomed to die, we're all sinners, the wages of sin is death, and because you are a sinner, you must repent. So I kept coming out to the altar call. So, apart from the fact that in my house we were made to confess our sin every morning and pray, now the church enshrined it into my subconscious, into my system. And I used to wonder, ah, ah. but even when we don't sin, nothing to lay hand on, they will say, we should say, but the one we have committed and the one we have not committed, and I'm sure a lot of you can identify. So, there was an assumption of a common sin. Now, Romans chapter 5, verse 12, where it was derived from, i like us to read because some scholars, and we're going to do quite some technical word study. How I many of you are ready for some technical word study, okay? We're going to do quite some technical word study. That's the only way to unbundle this subject. So pay attention. Romans chapter 5, verse number 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Now the first thing we have said in this series is that sin is specific. So he uses the word there, hamatea, by one man, hamatea, which is a noun for sin, entered into the world. I want you to never think that sin was outside somewhere, then it came in. Of course, in language, it's the weakness of the translation. Because you will never find any language per se that will be 100% perfect. So Paul uses a word, the word esekomai, esekomai, E-I-S-E-R-C-O-M-A-I, esekomai, E-I-S-E-R-C-O-M-A-I. It is used for an entrance from outside. It came into the house. It's used for something that was found inside that was not there before. And then it is also used for something that happened because of what was done inside. So we want to expand our horizon a little bit. What happened inside? What came inside? So he says entered. That is hamatea. So we can say sin happened 
it is used for it happened, it entered, it occurred, seen happened, it entered, it occurred. So through one man, sin happened to the world. Now, it shows a thinking that we must never lose. The word world is the word cosmos, used in a variable form, used for the affairs or the inhabitants, cosmos. So the question I want to ask you is, was this man an inhabitant? This man that through him, sin entered into the world was he an inhabitant of the cosmos huh? or was he a strange being was he in the cosmos okay so he was an inhabitant all right now so that means we will not be wrong to say sin happened to the world if was if he's an inhabitant then sin happened to the world because we will discover that every element of sin came from that world it came from that world. We will also see that because it's not like sin flew from somewhere. Because you couldn't have had sin outside man's activities. So sin entered into the world and then he says, and you know Paul was very careful. He said sin entered into the world. That happened by saying, you know what he said. Paul is actually describing an action of man. Not something that we cannot explain. He is describing an action of man. Not a mystery somewhere. Because we will follow through what he said. Then he said, and death by sin. Death by sin. Epanatos dihamatia. That is on the occasion of sin. Don't forget, the sin is specific by one man. Specific. So he says, death by sin. Now, he changes his use of word by saying, and so death passed upon all men. Death passed. Now look at the word passed. It's the word daikomai. Daikomai. D-I-E-R-C-H-O-M-A-I. It's used 44 times. It means to spread. To pass, daikomai, to spread. By saying it pass upon all men, the word daikomai is not used for procreation. That word is not used for procreation. Don't miss that. The word daikomai is not used for procreation. Daikomai is used for something that spread. A news that spread. In fact, from the way daikomai is used in the Greek, the spread will not be even all the time. So he says it's spread, which is a verb. It is a verb, daikomai, upon all men so that all have sinned. The verb, or to all that sinned. A verb, because you can't have spread without an action. So the spread of death is the spread of sin. The spread of death is the spread of sin. That word unto all men, again, is not procreation. Please don't miss the word procreation in all the sentences I am making. It's an actual influence. So he goes further to say, and death by sin. Now again, the word death is a noun that has a verb. The verb is the word tinesco. T-H-N-E-S-K-O. The verb. Which has a way it is also used. Let's look at how that verb is used. Matthew chapter 2 verse 20. Matthew chapter 2 verse 20. Saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. They are dead which sought the young man's child. New Testament Greek, that is, they have died. You find this word used nine times, of which eight times was literal. 
literal but notice there is a place where dying or to be made dead was not literal there is a place where dying or to be made dead was not literal first timothy chapter 5 verse 6 first timothy chapter 5 verse number 6 but she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth of course he's talking about indulgence there he refers to indulgence as an action of man called death indulgence as an action of man called death so the death of romans 5 12 again is in man's action because if the sin is in man's action then the death is in man's action that's the way he related it and so romans 5 14 should not be seen as procreation Romans chapter 5 verse 14 should not be seen as procreation. And so death, that is the word here, death passed upon all. And so that, that's the chi, that's the chi, that is the word so, is the word hutos, hutos, used for in this manner. And so, hutos is used for, in this manner, death passed. The word so, and so, death passed. In this manner, hutos, death passed. Again, sin by one man's sin, by one man's action. He is saying, in that same manner, what is the manner that we're discussing here? A man's action. In that same manner, don't forget the focus is Adam. For that all have seen. So he is describing the consequences of an action. He is not describing procreation. He is describing the consequences of an action. So in other words... From Romans chapter 5 verse 12, brother Paul begins to distinguish men. To distinguish men. And you see, it doesn't hold water to think that what Paul is saying is that somebody did something and because of what he did, all men have done it. It doesn't make sense to think like that. Because from what we are seeing here, that's not what Paul is saying. There is no principle like that in scripture. That because of what he has done, all men have done it. So all men have sinned. He didn't say all men have sinned. Mm -mm. All men have sinned, which is an active word. And you can't say all men have sinned if they were not born. Because it's an active word. They have to be born for there to have been a sin in their action. So the all men will have to be all men who were existing, who acted in sin. All men who were existing, who acted in sin. The only place where this can fly, and it's not this text, we will study it in this series, you know, where it can fly, where it can actually be seen in the human body. Because the human body has nothing to do with the human will. Let's even assume, let's even look at it. No human being reproduces another person's action. I mean naturally. No human being reproduces another person's action. I can copy an action. I can follow an action. But it was not a reproduction outside my conduct. I can copy, I can follow, but it will still be my action. If I copied your action, it's not your action. It's my action. Okay? My action. I can't blame you for my action. When you put your hand in the fire and the fire burnt you, if I copy you, 
and I put my hand in the fire, the fire will not burn you. It is me that the fire will burn. So I can copy your action, but it is now in my conduct. I don't know if I'm communicating at all. Now, stay with me. Again, like we said some days ago, the only place we can reinforce the issue of pre procreation because of sin will be physical body. The physical body. And that will mean us submitting that the physical body is man's spiritual nature, which doesn't make sense. For the physical body to be, then it will have to be that we are agreeing that the physical body is man's spiritual nature, which doesn't make sense. And like we said, it will imply or like we said, because of Adam, Adam. And because of Adam's sin, the implication of his sin, we can't say he gave birth to someone or the person became a sinner by the procreation of Adam. Now, you can hold Adam responsible for somebody's action. He hasn't done anything. He is being said to have done it without doing it. That would be a lie. And more critically, what now happens if the man has faith in Christ and is born again? It will therefore suffice that if that principle follows that every child he now has is also born again. If he committed sin and every child that is born by him is a sinner, then if he is born again, it will mean that all his children are automatically born again. Which doesn't make sense. Are we together here? Now, that is, it will have to follow like that. Okay, it will mean he is born again, but he is reproducing by spiritual nature for the devil. Does it make sense? Okay, so he is a sinner. All the children he reproduces are sinners. So he is now born again. All the children he reproduces are born again automatic. It doesn't make sense. Or he is now born again, but by nature he is reproducing for Satan. Are you seeing the foolishness of that school of thought? Stay with me. So you cannot rep reprobate and approbate. We will get to that text, maybe, you know, Sunday or Monday. One man's disobedience, all were made sinners. One man's obedience, all were made righteous. When you are teaching proper doctrine, no emotions, no excitement. Okay? It will imply that, therefore, we didn't do anything to become sinners. It also means we didn't do anything to be made righteous. It's not by works. What you are saying, in other words, is that all men are righteous. Which still doesn't follow. There's a text in 1 Corinthians 7.14 where this is mentioned. And I've had some people try to preach it. There's a teaching that came into Nigeria in the 80s. Or I don't know if you can remember it. They called it godly seed. Godly seed. It was a popular teaching in the 80s that came into Nigeria. It's another way of overstretching the truth. You know, when you overstretch the truth, it becomes a lie. When you overstretch it. Now look at that First Corinthians 7, 14. Let me even deal with that. Read for me. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. But now are they holy. Now, listen carefully. There is nowhere sanctification is called salvation. Nowhere. Rather, there is a sanctification that salvation produces. There is a sanctification that salvation produces. Sanctification describes salvation, but it is not salvation. By saying the unbelieving husband, he is talking about salvation, alpha pistio. That means the man has not believed. 
He is sanctified by the wife. And the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. I did a bit of this in Bible school two days ago. Okay, but we're dealing with it technically now. Now read for me that 1 Corinthians 7.15. PJ. But if the unbelieving departs, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. All right, now, he uses the word agaezo, A-G-E-A-Z-O, used 28 times. Now, agaezo is also used for natural objects. For example, Matthew 23, 17. Matthew chapter 23, verse number 17. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold? The gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold. The word agaezo means to treat special, to treat different. Okay, to treat something special, to treat something different. Matthew 23, 17, where we just read. Except in the cases of persecution, abuse and deceit. There is no basis to say you want to separate for someone from someone because of faith. Two of you were unbelievers. You got born again, but your wife is not born again. You can't send her, send her away because you are now born again. Except in the cases of persecution, deceit, or abuse. Otherwise, there's no basis to send her away just because you are born again and she's not born again. And so if you cannot separate and divorce because of your faith, you cannot also do it because of doctrinal differences. You see that? This lays a foundation for you. Look at that Matthew 23, 17 again. Matthew 23, 17. Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold? The gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold or the temple that makes the gold gold special sanctify the gold means the temple makes the gold special look at another place first timothy 4 5 first timothy chapter 4 verse 5 for it is sanctified by the word of god and prayer so the sanctification is not the value of the gold but the value of the temple the sanctification is not the value of the gold, but the value of the temple. Read it again, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. What is sanctified? Look at verse 4. Verse 4. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. So without the prayer, without the word of God, it is not treated special. So without the temple, the gold is ordinary. It is the temple that makes the gold special. So he is saying in that, in that breath, 1 Corinthians 7.14, without the husband, without the believing husband, because it is the believing husband that places value on the unbelieving wife. Sanctified there means once a man is born again, he places value on his partner, wife or husband, that is not born again. He's not talking about salvation. He uses the word, 1 Corinthians seven fifteen is the word holy. The word akapathos. Akathatos. A-K-A-R-T-H-A-T-O-S. A-K-A-R- T-H-A-T-O-S. Again, it's used for things. Again, remember that when Cornelius sent for Peter, the words the angel said was, you cannot call unclean what God has cleaned. The people he was referring to were not born again. You cannot call unclean what God has cleansed. So the cleansing he's talking about is my plan to save them. I have not yet saved them, but because I have a plan to save them, I'm beginning to treat them like those I have saved. Cornelius could have refused to listen, but the point is, look, I have treated these people with honor and dignity. Are you following? You cannot treat them uncommon. So it is used for treating with honor and dignity. 
The believing husband treats the unbelieving wife with honor and dignity. The unbelieving wife treats the believing husband with honor and dignity. And so Paul was careful by the next verse, but if the unbelieving depart, he still calls the unbelieving unbelieving. You don't become a believer by marrying a believer. You are still an unbeliever. But the believing husband has a responsibility to treat you special. That treatment is what is called sanctify. The way he will treat you. He won't treat you like unbeliever, like trash. No, he will treat you with the dignity of a believer, even though you're not a believer. Are we together here? That's a sanctification here. All right, so... so Brother Paul took time to deal with that. And he says, let him depart if a brother wants to, if, if the unbeliever wants to depart, a brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases. So marriage does not translate to salvation. That's what Paul is saying here. But marriage to a believer translates to honor. What is the honor? The fact that the believer will walk in love and he will submit to you. Now let's get back to Romans chapter 5. So, procreation cannot in any way be seen as a procreation of a spiritual nature. Procreation cannot in any way be seen as a procreation of a spiritual nature. You can't say you married a woman and two of you gave birth to children and the children are automatically born again. No, it never happens anywhere. It doesn't even reproduce minds. You can be born by brilliant parents, but you are a dongs, a dummy. Yeah, it happens. It doesn't reproduce thinking in the basic things. Procreation does not reproduce an information. You don't become an expert in, you know, geology because your father is one. You don't become an expert in engineering because your father was an engineer. You don't become an expert in music because your father is a music man. It doesn't even transfer ideas and ideals. That's thinking. So if it doesn't reproduce thinking, it cannot reproduce seeing. So now let's go further. Romans chapter 5 verse 13. Romans chapter 5 verse 13. For until, for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Now we said verse 12, the word di, di komai, used an esekomai, means to spread gradually. And it means to spread with definite actions. So Romans 5.13, which has been used carelessly, again, what is the world? The world is activities of men. Until the law, sin was in the activities of men, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Hamatea in cosmos. Activities of men. But he said sin is not imputed. The word imputed means to charge to an account that you pay back. Elogio, E-L-L-O-G-E-O, -L -L -E to charge a debt or an obligation. An obligation to pay something you owe. It is not you have not done wrong. Because sin means you have done wrong. But to impute means you have to pay. But because I have not asked you to pay, doesn't mean you haven't done wrong. Sin was in the world, but nobody was asked to pay because there was no law. So since you were not asked to pay, doesn't mean you didn't do wrong. So you have not been charged. You have not been asked to pay. That word, elogio, used by Paul. And in the instance of Paul, when he wrote Philemon, you know, about Onesimus, he said to Philemon, forgive Onesimus and anything he has done to you, charge it to my account. But remember, 
that you owe me your very life. When somebody talks to you like that, you don't even have the liver to think that uh, you are charging anything to his account. He already tells you, remember, even your very existence, you owe it to me. Okay? Now, sin was not imputed doesn't mean sin did not exist. But notice something. Sin was not charged, but sin still carried debt. Sin was not charged, but sin still carried death. So what did the law do? The law made death man's responsibility. The law made death man's responsibility. So it says, sin is uncharged, yet it had death. Romans 5.14. Please read again for me. Romans chapter 5 verse number 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Despite that sin was not charged, nevertheless is the word Allah. Allah is a conjunction. In spite of this, nevertheless, Allah there is A-L-L-A, -L -L -A, in spite of this. Nevertheless, that reigned from Adam to Moses. Again, where did that come from? Remember, we said is the word "fanatos die hamatia," death by sin. So, without the law, was death in the world? Huh? Yes. Was sin in the world? Yes. So the charge of the law is to condemn man. It's not the law that made sin sin or that produced death. No. Look at the word death reigned. By using rain again, he doesn't talk about procreation. By using rain. Again, the word rain is where you have the word kingdom. The word basileo. Basileo. B-A-S-I-L-E-U-O which refers to something gathering, followership, gathering, victims, or gathering submission. Death reigned. Note that this terminology is repeated in verse 17 of Romans chapter 5. Read for me Romans 5.17. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one. One man's offense, death reigned by one. Read on. Much more, they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus gift Christ. Gift of righteousness shall reign. Death reigned. Gift of righteousness shall reign. So you see that reign in verse 14. Rain in verse 17. Then you see the word rain in verse 21. Read verse 21 of Romans 5 for me. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Don't forget righteousness is a gift that you receive. So the reign of grace is also in individual. The reign of grace is also in individuals. The reign of grace, is it common to humanity or individuals? Individuals. He that had received the word lombano to take of the gift of righteousness. So, if you can look at the reign of grace, which is the reign of faith in what Christ has done, then you will know that the reign of death via sin is referring to individuals. The reign of grace is not automatic. You receive. So the same way you have to receive the reign of grace, that is how sin will be in individuals. I believe that Paul, you know, a lot of people have just used his identification terms to conjure things that are not even in the Bible. <laughs> he is using definite things that we can see. Look at Romans chapter 6 verse 12. Stay with me. Romans chapter 6 verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body 
that he should obey it in the loss thereof. Let not therefore sin reign. All right, now question. Can this reign of sin be stopped? Eh? Read, read. PJ, read for me. Read for me that scripture again. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Hold on. Can the reign of sin be stopped? Exactly. The reign of sin can be stopped. Let not sin reign. That means you can stop it. Is he talking about reproduction or action? Action. So every time you have the word basileo, which speaks of authority, you must have a space or a place. A space or a place. Back to Romans chapter 5 again. So the place or the space of that basileo is where? In the world. In the world. What is in the world? Huh? What is in the world? Uh -uh. Cosmos. Man's activities. Man's activities. Again, it's not referring to reproduction. It's referring to man's activities. Again, what Paul is saying is, what Paul is referring to humanity generally, he will not mention individuals. From Adam to Moses, that means I can actually follow the rain. He is not talking about reproduction. That's like in Adam, everybody has seen. That's not what he's talking about. Then if everybody has seen in Adam, he will not use active words. Because Paul used active words in that chapter, a lot of active words. Daikomai, Ezikomai, Hamatano, Basileo. These are words that describe actions. So he won't have used words that describe actions. What he is basically saying to us is that it is found in the actions of men. He's not talking about reproduction here. And don't forget again, Romans 5.14, it rained from Adam to Moses. He didn't say it stopped at Moses. It rained from Adam to Moses. Let's look at the word. The word he uses there is the word mekri. Mekri in the Greek. M-E-C-H-R-I. M-E-C-H-R-I. He doesn't talk about a stop. Like start from here to this place. The word mekri here actually is what you can call an adverb. Just describing action. Let's see where that word is used. Matthew eleven thirteen. Matthew chapter 11 verse 13. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. All the prophets and the law prophesied until John. He didn't say they stopped at John. Because John himself prophesied. <laughs> Matthew 11, 23. Matthew 11, 23. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. It would have remained until this day. So he explains a present day happening let's look at matthew 28 15 matthew 28 15 so they took the money and did as they were taught and this saying is commonly reported among the jews until this day this saying is commonly reported among the jews until this day commonly reported okay now so it's not a stop it's a description of the present happenings. Look at Romans 15, 19. Romans chapter 15, verse 19. Romans 15, 19. Through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. From Jerusalem and round about... In Elikrum, the gospel is being preached. But most especially, Ephesians 4.14. Ephesians 4.14. Not what Mercury. Ephesians 4.14. 
that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Next verse. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. Next verse. From whom the whole body fitly joined now, now together. Now go back to verse 13. Ephesians 4:13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. Till we all come is the word I was looking for, which means is an ongoing action. Till we all come, an ongoing action. Philippians 2 8. Philippians chapter 2, verse 8. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Ongoing reality. First Timothy 6.14, you can read at home. And 2 Timothy 2.9. Now, go back to Romans chapter 5. So, did death stop reigning at Moses? Church, did death stop, stop reigning at Moses? No. Now, because if you read further, he lets you see that the death reigned after. He is talking about the contained influence. When he said from Adam to Moses was to show that the effect of sin preceded the law. The effect of sin. So Romans 5.14 now says, put it up. Now, JP, I'm going to read. Nevertheless, that reign from Adam to Moses, even over them that have not, 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 is old English. Remember the word upon, epi, epi. Upon, when we say upon, is it on the head? Eh? so it's old English the word upon them is the word over them it's at the basis of it or at the instance of so do we find a voluntary action or involuntary action voluntary action so even over them the them are they inactive or active active so he is talking about procreation or action. Actions at the instance of them. Now pay attention. At the instance of them. Now look at a play of words here. Verse 12. Romans 5.12. A play of words. Romans 5.12. Read for me. Wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. Did you see a play of words? And, and so death passed upon all. So all have. Now look at verse 14. Verse 14, read for me. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned, after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Even over them, even at the instance of them. So death passed upon all. For that all have sinned. Even at the instance of them that have not sinned. Passed upon all men. For that all have sinned. Even at the instance of them that have not sinned. Within the same context. That's the play of word. So there was a negative put on sin for some people. A negative put that 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 already negates a corporate sin because it says they have not sinned <laughs> after the similitude of Adam's transgression, death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned, even over them that have not seen after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Are you in the building? Good. That is their actions are not Adam's actions. 
that negates a feeling of verse 12 because verse 12 is saying one man's action becomes every man's action if you don't look at it very carefully so he said from adam to moses he's not referring to a corporate sin but to generalize the actions of sin to generalize the actions of sin but not a particular common sin who had not sinned so he puts an alpha now in the greek anywhere you see an alpha is negative who had not sinned after the similitude of adam's transgressions so that means adam's transgressions is for who wait look at this verse 14 again read for me romans 5 14. pj in the spirit nevertheless that reign from adam to moses even over them that had not seen after the similitude of adam's transgressions who is the figure of him that was to come i love this that scripture negates adam's sin and annuls every thinking of Adam's sin being corporate. It negates it. Who had not, don't forget the word over in the word epi, at their own instance, which means everybody bears their father's name. Even over them that had not seen after the similitude. Now the word similitude is the word homoima. H-O-M-O-I-O-M-A. In the Greek is a word used for examples. Homoima. Homoima. <laughs> That's like some tongues, man. Homoyoma in the Greek. Well, you take the pronouncement, leave me with the spelling. H-O-M-O-I-O-M-A. Romans chapter 1 verse 23. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things into an image made like made like give me romans 6 5 pay attention romans 6 5 for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection in the likeness of his death in the likeness did he say it passed upon all who had not seen? Eh? Why is it only him that answered me first? Are you still thinking? <laughs> did he say it passed upon all who had not seen? What did he say? Eh? Who had not seen after the similitude of Adam's transgressions. Romans 6, 5 says, in the likeness. Give me Romans 8, 3. Romans chapter 8, verse 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, Condemned sin in the flesh. In the likeness of sinful flesh. Likeness. Philippians 2 7. Philippians chapter 2 verse 7. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Made in the likeness. Huh. Now. You can also read Revelation 9, 7 at home. The verb of that word, the verb of that homoima is homoio. H-O-M-O-I-O-O. -O -O. That's the verb. You will find the verb in Romans 9, 29. 
Romans chapter 9, verse 29. And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us his seed, we had been as Sodoma and been made like unto Gomorrah. And be made like unto Gomorrah. Hebrews 2, 17. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17. Wherefore in all things it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Now that's a verb. Made like unto his brethren, the way he was formed. Acts 14, 11. Acts 14, 11. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lycaonia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. In the likeness of men. So go back to Romans 5, 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned, after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Now hold it there. So, did men sin from Adam to Moses? Huh? Was it a corporate sin? Who had not sinned after? Who had not sinned after the same manner of Adam's transgression? So what did we use Adam there for? Adam is mentioned there for the first person. Not the one whose sin is everybody's sin. But as the first person. So did you ever read where it says sin passed upon all men? Huh? Did you ever read that? Huh? What passed upon all men? But not sin. Huh? It is a consequence of sin based on man's action. Which means there is no universal sin that Jesus came to die for Adam's sin. Nothing like that. So sin doesn't pass from a man to another. In fact, in the Old Testament, a prophet of the Old Testament settled that matter. Easy. Ezekiel 18, 2 to 5. Ezekiel 18, verse 2 to 5. Put it up. What mean ye that he used this proverb concerning the land of Israel, saying, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on earth edge? Ne next verse. As I live, saith the Lord God, ye shall not have occasion any more to use this proverb in Israel. Next verse. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the father, so also the soul of the son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Next verse. But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right. Now go to verse 19 and 20 of Ezekiel 18. Yet say ye, why doth not the son bear the iniquity of the father? When the son hath done that which is lawful and right, and hath kept all my statutes, and hath done them, he shall surely live. 20. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. That is, even with their plenty impression of God in the Old Testament, they annul the fact that the sin of a father comes on a child. It's impossicant. Impossicantly impossible. Ezekiel settled it. What mean you? Why are you talking like this? As surely as I live, say the, the Lord, it is he that sin that will die for his sin. The sin of the father shall not be on the, the child, and the sin of the child shall not be on the father. Settled. So it's totally not correct to think that somebody's sin becomes another person's sin. So stop blaming Adam. Now. You know, it takes people a while to change. You know, these things I've been teaching in, the, in, the, in this Soteria series, a lot of repentance is happening in your life, right? You, 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 you have to give up some things, right? There are a number of things. Because we're traveling together. 
and we are seeing it together. Are we not? Patiently, painstakingly. We are looking at scriptures together. And we are doing word studies together. Exegesis together. It's not like I just come here and say, no, there is nothing like original sin. Amen. Be blessed. No, we are going together. That's why when we now say there is nothing like original sin, somebody will say, heresy. Just put laughter there. Just laugh and be going. How do you start helping such a person? So there is no universal sin. That's why Jesus in John chapter 9, look at John chapter 9 verse 2 and 3. John chapter 9 verse 2 and 3. And his disciples asked him saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? There was that opinion, even in Jesus' time, they were still struggling with this thing they call generational cause, which is a big business for African pastors. It's a huge enterprise. Generational curses, curses, generational curses, family altars, offering of the firstborn is a huge eh, enterprise for African pastors. It's a franchise, not just for African pastors. It came from America. It's an interglobal enterprise. It's easy. We just look at you, describe your problems and connect you to your ancestors and you'll be happy. You will see it's true. It came from your ancestors. That's it. So you, you throw away responsibility to succeed and you blame it on your ancestors and you comfort yourself in your poverty and laziness. It's a wicked gospel. God will Punish that gospel in Jesus' name. It's a very wicked gospel. They asked Jesus, this guy is born blind. Who sinned? His father or himself? Jesus said, none of them. He is not blind because of a... There's nothing like generational cause. He's not blind because his father transferred it or because he sinned. That's not why he's blind. He's blind because people get blind. And my job is to heal blindness. For this purpose, the Son of God is manifested that he may destroy the works of the devil. Case closed. So anywhere I see an activity that the devil has brought abnormality, I destroy and restore. Stop blaming your parents for your poverty. Stand up, get a skill and you'll be rich. Stop spiritualizing poverty. You are poor because you are lazy. You are poor because you are not equipped to compete with the world of money making. You don't have the tools. Or even if you have the tools, your tools are irrelevant. Or you are behind time. You develop a skill that will have made you a millionaire in 1970. And now you are using that tool in 2023. Totally useless. You and a man that don't have skill. In fact, that man is better than you. Because he still has a virgin mind to learn new things. Leave that here. is a big enterprise for a lot of African pastors. Then they will now tell you you can be free from it. And because you are desperate to succeed without hard work. You didn't hear that. You are desperate to succeed how? Without hard work. So it's cheaper to be giving African pastors money in the name of breaking generational causes. At least they will, they will tell you it will take you five years of constant giving before you can be free. By the time it's five years and you discover you are not free, you will have made enough investment. Then now you don't want to go away because if you remember how much you have put inside, 
it's better to stay and keep putting because I'm closer than when I started. You remain a captive. They know what they're doing. One told me, when you want to give people deliverance, tell them it will take six months so that they can stay with you for six months. When it's getting to six months, move the goalpost ahead. Keep them in perpetual bondage. A pastor told me that. He said, because if you free them, they will leave. I've been around. Even the children of Israel, when they were moving from Egypt to Canaan, there was what Moses said. And God said, this generation of people that doubted shall not enter the promised land, except the children from two years down. So that means what the fathers did did not affect the children. There was a separation of people from children. He said the children who were not in Egypt with them. You know, it's not unlikely that the children will have said, Daddy, you mean Moses brought us here to destroy us? But God said they did not doubt. We will get to that. And you know, I told you there cannot be seen without knowledge. Hello? That's why when prophet... Well, you know, when the prophet has seen Herod, the prophet in the book of Jeremiah, what he did to the children when Jesus was born, two years and below, he said, Rama wept. There was weeping in Rama. Then he now said, she will now rejoice because the children will be found. <laughs> Jeremiah 31, 15 to 17. Read for us. Jeremiah 31, 15 to 17. Thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rahel, weeping for her children, refused to be comforted for her children, because they were not. Next verse. Thus saith the Lord, refrain thy voice from weeping and thine eyes from tears, for thy work shall be rewarded, saith the Lord, and they shall come again from the land of the enemy. Next verse. And there is hope in thine end, saith the Lord, that thy children shall come again to their own border. So the children that died will come again. That means they are not lost. Keep that somewhere. The same statement, <laughs> when David, you know, David and Bathsheba, hello, David and Bathsheba, and the baby died. Look at what David said. After the baby died. 2 Samuel 12, 23. 2 Samuel 12, 23. But now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. I shall go to him. That means where the baby has gone is where I am going as a believer in Christ. I shall go to him. Rachel cried, but she will rejoice because the children will be found. Keep those somewhere. Even the scripture people quote for that generational cause, David said, I was shaping in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. That was David's mother's iniquity. It was a specific iniquity. My own mother did not conceive me in iniquity. Obviously, it's debatable among theological circles, but it is it is it you know it is established that the the mother of David was not the legitimate wife of Jesse. So that's why David said the conception, my conception happened in sinful circumstances. He was talking about the condition of his birth, not his nature. The condition around his birth. So all those things were just, you know, construed by people to think that a child is born a sinner. Now go back to Romans chapter 5 verse 14 again. Are you still in the building? Romans chapter 5 verse 14 again. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, 
even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Even over them that have not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Now notice, he changes the word. He now uses a word called parabasis. Parabasis. P-A-R-A-B-A-S-I-S. Parabasis is a willful disregard. Is an action Parabasis is not in nature. Parabasis is in action. It's a willful action. It means to overstep or to step beyond. To overstep or to step beyond. You will see that word parabasis in Romans 2.23. Romans chapter 2 verse 23. Thou that makest thy boast of the law. Through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God. Through breaking the law. So that is an adjective. It's like some people say, you know, there is sin and there is transgression. Haba. You know, go school. Transgression is the adjective of sin. Romans chapter 4 verse 15. He calls it breaking the law. Read for me Romans chapter 4 verse 15. Because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. So transgression is a breaking of the law, which is a sin. For where no law is, there is no transgression. This is why some people say because there was no law in Genesis, there was no transgression. And they will still embrace the law of faith in Abraham. There was no law in Genesis, so there was no transgression. But they believed that Abraham believed and he was righteous. Righteous from what? From what did he become righteous? Some people don't think through. There was no transgression, so what was Adam seen? Genesis, I mean Galatians 3.19, you can read at home. Give me 1 Timothy 2.14. 1 Timothy 2.14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. The woman being deceived was in the transgression. Now go back to Romans 5.14. So the word transgression there is an adjective describing that now. Romans 5.14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Now this is where the challenge is. Who is the figure of him that was to come? Now you need to realize the weakness of vocabulary when this was written. Because this gives the view that he is saying Adam is the figure of Christ, him that was to come. But that's not what he's saying. Sometimes careless reading can make us assume what he is not saying from what he's saying. The word who there is the Greek word hos, H-O-S, or ho, H-O. Who is, hos, ho, is used 411 times. That word H-O or H-O-S can be which, can be who, can be what, and can be that. That word H-O or H-O-S in the Greek can be which, can be who, can be what, or can be that. Used oftentimes to stress an actor or an action or an event. Used oftentimes to stress an actor or an action or an event. So you will know which one to pick out of the four. Either the which the who, the what, or the that by context. It is context that will determine which of those four you will use in the text. Who, just like saying, if God be for us, who can be against us? And then you start looking for somebody in your office or in your neighborhood. Whereas, actually, it's not who can be against us. It's supposed to be, if God be for us, what can be against us? 
what because if you read the context it is a context of what not a context of who because what he was referring to was accusation not a person who shall lay charge accusation so what he was discussing in romans 5 12 13 and 14 was he discussing men or actions actions so what should be our host or who in romans 5 14 who or what or which or that Huh? which which is which is okay question what was he referring to Adam or transgression huh? so it can be who so Adam's sin is a figure which is the word two post two post two post is used for a figure a pattern or a mark a figure a pattern or a mark something that is followed after again it's not a reproduction something that leaves a mark that you can see you know it's not difficult to know that you know that bible account it shows that sin spreads through cain not abel Sin spread through Cain, not Abel. That's how sin spread. Sin did not spread through Abel. It spread through Cain. So sin, which is of the wicked one, spread through Cain. So by using the word tuples, which you find in John 20, 25. John 20, 25. John 20, 25. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails. Observe the word print of the nails. He's not looking for the nails. He's looking for the print, which is the mark. The word tupus. The pattern. Where I will see the nail pass through. Look at Acts 7, 43, 44. Acts 7, 43, 44. Yea, you took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god, Remphan, figures which he made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Next verse. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen. Fashion figures which you were made look at romans 6 17 romans chapter 6 verse 17 but god be thanked that you are the servants of sin but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you that form of doctrine vitally first corinthians 10 6 first corinthians chapter 10 verse 6 now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. They were our examples. The word example is the word to pose. Did he list every sin available in that text? Huh? No. But he listed examples. Philippians 3.17 Philippians 3.17 Brethren, be followers together of me. And mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. Mark them us for an example to pose. First Thessalonians 1 7. So that ye were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. Examples, a pattern to follow. Second Thessalonians 3 9. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. Example. First Timothy 4.12 Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Titus chapter 2 verse 7. Lots of scriptures good for your health. 
In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. A pattern of good works. An example. Take these ones down for further study. First Peter 5, 3, Hebrews 8, 5. First Peter 5, 3, Hebrews 8, 5. So that means Adam's influence was not reproduction. Adam's influence was action. He calls it a pattern. Why will he call it a pattern? He started by calling it hamartia. Then he called it a parabasis. An action that now becomes an example. An action of Adam that now becomes an example. So by using sin entered into the world. How did it enter into the world? Adam's action. So Adam's action now became an example, a pattern. He was not talking about procreation. He was talking about an example. So that Romans chapter 5 verse 14 again. Romans chapter 5 verse 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Who is the figure of him that was to come? Who is the figure of him? Again, the word here is the Greek word hoto. Hoto. Used for day. Day. Definite article. Which is a figure of that which. Of that which. Or that was to come come specific it's not a person he's talking about because the word to come is the word melo melo in the greek melo is not used for men melo is used for things that will happen melo is not used for men it is used for things that will happen look at romans 4 24 romans chapter 4 verse 24 but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. It shall be imputed. Action. Romans 8.14. Romans 8.14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Romans 8.38. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Nor things to come. So back to Romans 5. Adam's transgression, therefore, is not a procreation. It's an example of such that will come after. Adam's transgression is an example of such that will come after he had told you in verse 14 who have not seen after the similitude so that means he does not generalize sin even though sin is sin there was not one sin that belongs to humanity now adam's sin was unbelief but we will see where and how that will come into this explanation because if you follow what we said earlier in genesis 2 by the time god said it is not good how many of you remember it is good it is good it is good then chapter 2 verse 16 17 it is not good that means there was already a defect so what happened in genesis 3 was an awareness of the sin they had already seen in genesis chapter 3 they had already seen so genesis chapter 3 was the awareness that's why i say who told you not who is telling you who told you that means it had happened and they have been informed of what has gone wrong. Then they now said, we are naked. And by the time they are saying they are naked, they are already looking for solution. That means the event had already happened. 
Remember the statement was, we are naked. So it was, what have you done? Who told you? Because what he was giving was a help meet. Instead of him staying with the help meet, which is life, he went for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. <laughs> Who told you that you are naked? So Adam was already naked in chapter 2. He has been naked for quite a while. <laughs> and all this while he has been naked, he has been looking for solution. <laughs> looking for solution. It's not in one moment that he thought of hiding. The thing has lingered. It's not in one second that he thought of using leaves to cover himself. No, it wasn't original now. You don't just see now and just, uh, and just carry leave. You that have never been covered before. You have never worn clothes before. You don't know about clothes. So it took time. Then they started thinking and innovating what to do to cover the nakedness. Finally, they arrived at leaves. The leaves were not enough. They wore the leaves and went to hide. <laughs> Are you following now? It took a bit of time. It took a bit of time. So Adam's sin becomes an example. It was his transgression that became an example. Romans chapter 5 verse 15. As I stop somewhere here, we shoot from here Sunday morning first service. This kind of teaching is good for the cool of the day. You don't take this kind of teaching in the afternoon. You can fall down with your notebook. <laughs> it's good for first service and night service. Glory to God. Read for me Romans chapter 5 verse 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. That word offense. That word offense. Aye. So question before I stop. Don't miss the word offense. Who? Does a man follow Adam's example by an act of his will? Huh? Is sin outside the volition of man? Huh? So to call it sin, there must be an action. There must be an action. It cannot be seen if there is no action. So in the course of this teaching, we will establish what was Adam's action. Because there was an action. And we will find out because it cannot be seen without knowledge. What knowledge was given to Adam... And what action did Adam take that made him a sinner? Are you ready for that? Stand on your feet. We start from there on Sunday. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Turn your neighbor and say, hey neighbor. From what we have looked at, there is no original sin. Number one. Number two, sin is not automatic. Nobody is born a sinner. Sin is a product of knowledge and action. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Death reigned from Adam to Moses even over them that have not seen. So even though they didn't sin, death still reigned. After the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of that which is to come. Did I get clear tonight? Glory to God. Lift your right hand. So, Father, I ask that light keeps shining in our hearts. Revelation knowledge increases. Every shady area cleared out by revelation. In the name of Jesus. 
your people built up, equipped, edified. And Lord, we stand boldly to proclaim the truth of the gospel, to raise disciples, to build men, to mature men, and equip ministers of the gospel all over the Blue Marble planet until Christ is known all over the world. And we rejoice and we thank you for the privilege to do what we are doing, to learn what we are learning, and to grow and be grounded and totally rooted in the truth that is in Christ Jesus. Thank you for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen.